Uh, it made sense to send me into the rain to talk about a lack of rain, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for that assignment. Welcome. We did well today. It turns out we need an average of an inch of rain a week for quite a while to really get back to any kind of normalcy. And until that happens, it's going to continue putting a lot of stress on trees. And that gets even more complicated in severe weather. Today's rain is certainly the University of Minnesota Landscape Arboretum's most welcome recent visitor. I feel a little better, but only a little. And it will take a lot more rain before Aaron Buchholz feels a lot better. My job is to look for plants that don't look like they should, and then I need to try and figure out what's wrong with them. In most cases, including with this rough-looking buckeye tree, drought is definitely the root of most problems. And unfortunately, in an effort to save itself, it shed its leaves. And that might be enough for it to survive this dry spell. But she says small trees are a bigger concern. If it's been in the ground less than five years, especially, that's when I start to worry about it. Aaron helped bring this ginkgo tree back with regular watering, but it's still stressed. We have a little bit of leaf scorch starting at the margins, and that's environmental. That's from heat, that's from drought. It's good to get some mulch around the base of it. You want a wood chip about two to four inches deep around the base of the tree, but you don't want the wood chips to be right up against the trunk. You still want to scoot them out just an inch or two so you're not actually burying the trunk of the tree. And even if you have a large tree with an established root system, Aaron says the extreme shifts in weather in recent years, from wet summers to dry, cold winters, have taken a toll. And it's worth looking now for signs of trouble. This Kentucky coffee tree right here, for instance, this is its normal response to extreme heat and drought conditions. It curls its leaves up. This one right here is particularly stressed out. So it's doing this as a way to conserve its own water. You can feel the leaves and it's not wilted. There's still plenty of water moving through the leaf. It just curls up to protect itself a little bit more so it doesn't lose as much of its moisture or it doesn't expose itself as much to the hot sun. Is that a sign that you need to do anything? If you're noticing this on a lot of your plants, set up a sprinkler. It never hurts to set up a sprinkler. Make sure that you are getting a, a slow drink of water for your trees. Because all it would take is a quick moving storm to do significant damage as long as this drought sticks around. Ugh, it's kind of like if you're going in for surgery, you don't want to already be under stress from some sort of illness. So if you do notice any lightning strikes or damage to your trees, make sure that you are getting them adequate water to reduce their stress so that if you do have to take a limb off or cut the tree in another way, you're not adding to its stress because it does need to put extra energy into repairing its own injury. Now, Aaron says if you're in an area getting hit with severe weather and you're worried about losing any of your tree, she says look out for more violent swaying back and forth than normal or cracks caused by wind or lightning. She says you might even hear a loud crack. And that is a sign of trouble. If, if it's a large or important tree on your property, especially, she said, it's probably a good idea then to consult an expert, Jana. Well, so would she suggest going so far as to calling a company that inspects trees? You can call a company if you're kind of wanting just a, a you know, bird's eye view mm -hmm. to talk to someone. The University of Minnesota Extension Service has a master gardener line that you can call. There's a website. It even runs down a list of experts you can call in your area. Oh, helpful tip. Yeah, Thank we've you got so it on care11.com. Hey, that's the place to go. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ken.